So here's the basic interface of MOI. Um, as you can see, like you have three windows. So the easiest way to get a single window is to go back here at the bottom. You get one window or you get a split window, meaning that you get three of them at the same time. So each window you can actually change to like, you know, front, back, right. If you double, double click, you get the opposite window. So let's try it. First of all, going in 3D. Interface is very basic. You know, the middle mouse lets you pan. The wheel lets you zoom in and out. Uh, and then the other two buttons are just depending on what you have. So let's just draw a basic shape. Let's start with a square. Um, the grid, you can actually have the grid snap. You can not show the grid, but the grid is really useful in this case. Um, and you can actually have so that you have, you, you can pick what kind of snaps you have. So you can have no snaps at all or only some. So that, right now I'm not gonna use any snaps. So you notice here how it creates the shape by, oh, sorry, I'm not, there's my square. Okay, so to change the view, let's go from the top. There we are. So you notice here how it has the little handles. These are very similar to what you get in Illustrator. So you can actually change the shape, move it around, twist it, change it. Um, in order to work on this though, you have this thing um, called show points. So this is very similar to what you do in Illustrator again, because it actually allows you to grab this and they become more or less, less like vectors. And you can add points to this. And then now that you added a point, it becomes a Bessier point. So very interesting way of working. You can add a point over here. And then that point, come on. There we go. So if I select it again and go show points, there's my two points. So these become Bessier points. So interesting way of making curves. Let's go back to 3D. Once I have a shape, I can modify it. So this is the transform button. Uh, so I can scale it. Here, for instance, I'm gonna pick a pivot point, a line, and then this allows me to scale it to some size. I can also do a uh, copy. So I'm gonna pick these reference ones. Let's use the snap. So I'm gonna pick this point and then I'm gonna copy it over here. So I can make multiple copies. Um, I can also mirror it. So I'm gonna pick this point and then it automatically knows how to mirror itself. Now, this line over here, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim it. And if you ever wonder how to do any of this stuff, you can just uh, you know follow the instructions on here. For example, add trim points. Well, well I'm gonna add the trim point here, one here, and then this line, now it's separate. So essentially this sketch has been broken. But when I do the same here, I want to trim it. I'm gonna add trim points. So here, here, done. And then this becomes an independent line. If I wanna join these two sketches together, I can just simply go like this and then add another one here. So then, you know, it, what I like about uh, uh, this program is that it's super fast to sketch and draw things compared to uh, some of the other applications that you may have used in the past. Now, let's do a construction thing. So here, for instance, we have an extrude button. And this one is very, just like any other software, you know, you extrude it, there it is. So this is a solid. The sketch is still there, but now this, this has made a, a, an entity on by itself. I can take, I can draw, let's see if I can, sorry, I need to pick that surface and I'm gonna draw a circle on top of that surface. There it is. Now, if I extrude it, oops, sorry, I need to cut it. Let's see. Let's 
Yeah, so I'm going to cut it in this direction. And then what I need to do is to see I have two objects. So I need to do what's called a Boolean. And a Boolean, I'm going to, I'm going to basically, uh, just like in Illustrator, I'm going to uh, subtract, make the difference. So select objects to subtract this one. I believe, oh, let me try it again. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's try by. I'm going to select this. I'm going to move it. And from this, I'm going to split my window view. So I'm going to move it from here. Move, pick the center point. There we go. Okay. Now I'm gonna move this guy. Oops. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can do the Boolean operation now. So select base objects, select objects to subtract. There. And as you can see, it created that Boolean operation. Basically, it gave me that uh, hole. So that's a, those are the basics of like how you create a, in this case, a solid shape um, in MOI. The thing though, that what, ma what makes MOI really powerful is the surfacing. So let's get rid of some of this stuff. So the surfacing is what really makes this unique. So let's start by making ourselves a line. So this is a freeform line and I can pick any method to making this. So there's one line, here's another one. Now, I, I wanna make a change. I'm gonna select this line and I'm gonna split it. Let's look at the points that we have. So I'm gonna make it so it's a 3D line. Notice how I'm moving in a particular direction on the screen to create this 3D line. And I'm actually gonna move the whole thing like this. There we go. So I have this thing floating on there. Now I can make myself a cage. Basically make the connection like that. When I have these straight lines, what I can do is I can add points to make them move this and let's say that I want to move it so that it has this type of shape. It's very important to just keep uh, uh, the, the, the shapes aligned in a certain direction so that you don't get lost too easily. But here I'm going to add a point. I'm going to move it. There we go. So in 3D, you can see that this is making this sort of weird kind of shape. Well, this is what's called a cage, and a cage is basically made of four-sided lines. If I select all of these and I go to the network, it creates a surface. And here's where the magic happens, because this is a more or less a really, this would be really difficult to do in other softwares. Um, what's really great though, is that the surface is linked to my sketches. So for instance, if I move my sketch now, if I move my construction lines, ah, sorry, I, I guess I should have said done. Let's do it again, network, done. Okay, so if I move this, it actually changes the surface. So you see how it, uh, it moves my surface, so it changes too. Uh, you have to be careful though, because this only works as long as the lines are attached. If I move the surface, if I go over here and say move, um, I, I think they're linked. Let's see. No, they're no longer linked. So you see the, 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 the pathway is broken, so it's no longer connected. But I, I remain my, I, I keep my original cage, so I can do another type of uh, network solution. 
cages only work when you have all four items selected. So, let's see. There we go. So that's how you can make. Uh, this is the the most the simplest, fastest, uh, most productive way of making surfaces because you get a surface like this. Uh, you could edit it. So if I go like that, you see how it has like a uh, this surface body. So I can actually interactively change all of these. Um, I could select a whole bunch of them and try to stretch them. So the problem with doing this is that now now it's a little bit more uh, detailed, the level of uh, transformation. So it's not as good. But for example, I can scale this in a certain way. Uh, let's just pick these guys and let's scale them. So we can scale them or change them like that. We can rotate them. So they, this is what's called basically a nerve, a nerve uh, surface. Any questions about this? I think uh, the, the, the best way to do is just to try it. Just try it out, like uh, do the tutorials, they're really quick. Uh, the interface is nothing. I mean, it's like uh, there's about 15 buttons. The let me show you a couple of other things you can do here. So uh, all the other stuff that you do in 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 SolidWorks, you can do here. For instance, let's say that we draw ourselves a curve like that. Now uh, let's do a rotational. Well, let's do a straight line this. We're going to now, oh, this is the top view, so we need to flip it 90 degrees. So over here, we're going to rotate. This is the pivot point. This is my handle. So well, there we go. It's 90 degrees now. Uh, let's zoom out. This is the front view, perfect. So let's do a rotational. So if we construct here and we go say uh, revolve, it's going to say, okay, revolve, what's the axis point? Well, this is my axis point, there's my revolve. And because this is an open surface, it doesn't have any thickness. So this becomes basically an open surface object. Right. Um, I believe. Oh, I know what's happening is that I need to get rid of that. Let's try it again. I don't really need a, a line to, to revolve it. I can just simply go like this, revolve, and pick an axis point like this. And there it is. Now it should be open. It looks like it's closed. I got rid of that. So here's a really quick surface. And the great thing about this is that because it's, it's a surface, I can actually build on top of this. So I can create other things that attach to it. For instance, I can make myself a line here. I can add a pivot point in the middle. I can then make the points show, come on. And if I move it, ah, it's a wrong view. Over here, I can make it like this, move it up here. And as long as I have four sides, I can make a network surface. Now, to make a network surface, I would need to trim this whole circle so, so it connects. The trick to making network surfaces is to trim the points. So let's try it. I'm going to make add a trim point right here, right here. So now this is one line and this is another one. If I try to do now a network surface, it should work. 
Nope, not enough uh, geometry. However, something I can try, I can add another connection here. And again, oops, that's the wrong connection. Let's say that I add a line from here to there. Something's wrong here. Let's try it on the bottom. Here's my line. Uh, the middle point right there. Okay, so now I have a, I basically split it up. Let's try it again. Do it trim. So here we go. Let's trim at uh, trim points right there. So now this, all of this, oh, I need to trim it over here too. So let's see, trim. Uh, trim points there. So this three sides. One, two, th three. You see how the three are connected? So that should be yeah. So there we go. So now we can make a network patch. So that's how you you can build um, multiple objects making use of uh, surfaces. So what I suggest that you do. Um, to get the hang of this, it's it's a lot. It, like uh, watch some of the tutorials. They're like I say, they're only about. Uh, well, this one's ten minutes. They're about between five and ten minutes, but they're really simple to follow. And the exercises are like it gives you a lot of the uh, tricks and uses of how you can make the surfaces work. You know, here's about a, a revolve feature. Um, what I love about this software is that it's super fast. Like you can do stuff in a matter of minutes here that would take you hours to do in Illustrator or in, sorry, in, a, in a SolidWorks or even in Fusion. So you can do it really he, uh, here really quickly. Uh, another nice thing is that you can actually import your Illustrator files. So if you have some sort of Illustrator file that you want to bring in, you can actually do it uh, over here and import, and you see all you need to import is a DXF. So if you save your file as a DXF, you can import it in. You can even import uh, SolidWorks files as long as they're DXF or STEP. Um, the stuff that you make in here, it's also exportable to SolidWorks, um, either as a surface or a solid. You have a choice, whatever you want to. So, um, Anyways, you can use whatever method you want to try it out. Uh, one thing that I, I wanted to show you too, that's really cool is the, let's do a quick sketch. Kind of like this. And then, So there's my sketch, there's my points. I can show my points. Uh, you can join together. So now they, these are the same. So that's one thing about these things that when you join the things together, they become a single object or the other way you can separate them. Okay, so here's my rotate. Now let's try to do again a revolve. These are the objects. Here's my path that I'm going to pick. So there. Now, what's interesting here is that if I move this, it actually changes the shape. So I can edit on the spot. If I move that, it moves along interactively so that you can see how the rotational changes. Um, I believe you can also add dimensions to this. There's, there's a way to add 
uh, dimensions to it. I think they've actually, no, sorry, that's the one thing it doesn't have. That's the one thing it doesn't have. The, there's no dimensional pattern. There's a way to make dimensions. It's, it's kind of like a, it's what you do to dimension something here is let's say that you make a box. Um, you make a very simple, here. So you make a box like this. Oh, come on. Now, you see here, you can actually enter the height of this. So it's a 14 by 20. Now this is proportional, so we just wanna make it so that it's 11 by 14. And then I would use this as my guiding object so that I could actually I would move it over here, pick that point over there. And you see the height here is 20, so I would move this object over here and now that's 20. And that's that's how you do, that's how you get around the sort of like the constraint of having no dimensions. You, you create this construction geometry that you know the dimensions so that you can keep reusing this. So for example, if you make it uh, uh, 40, now I just need to go and say, let's move it over here, oops. And then what I can do is I can move this object there. So that I know that it's 20 millimeters high and then it's 40 millimeters high here because I use this as like my construction block. So that's how you get around doing dimension stuff in, in MOI. Um, once you do this, like if you export this object, if you go file, export, and you save it as a step file, actually you have a lot, full, whole bunch of options here. You can actually 3D print it if you make it an OBJ. You can also send it as a step file, use it in, uh, in SOLIDWORKS, or you can make it an IGES. Either one should work. Um, the only difference is that once the 30 days uh, are over, then you won't get a chance to, to save anymore, to export, Not, then, then, then you have to pay. But for the next 30 days, you can just experiment and try it and, and see how.